within the COMSOP, the Commercial Standards of Practice, from the Certified Commercial Property Inspectors Association, there is Section 17. And Section 17 is a standard of practice for performing fire door inspections. Fire door inspections are an, uh, an ancillary or a secondary form of inspection that commercial inspectors can provide to clients who do need fire door inspections. A fire door is a specific door designed to compartmentalize flame and smoke so that will allow occupants to move in and out, but to eliminate the spread or slow down the spread of flame and smoke. And so with that, let's take a look at a fire door inspection on a single leaf swinging fire door. When we're looking at different fire doors, each type of fire door has a different type number. This specifically, the door that I'm standing in front of, is called a Type 6 Builder's Hardware Fire Door. Why it's called a Type 6 Builder's Hardware Fire Door is that this did not come in one complete assembly. Each element of this fire door is independently installed to comprise the fire door, but yet each element has been previously listed and inspected by a testing agency. The most important thing you can identify when you look at any fire door is to ensure that there is a fire door label present. Within these doors, there are three different types of closures. This is a self-closing door. What a self-closing door is, it's a door that's always closed. And when it's opened, it self-closes once again, independently and automatically behind us. There's no device that holds that door open. And so this is a self-closing door. When we look at the door and do there our inspection, there are three different ways that we are to inspect fire doors. Our first is a visual inspection. We're gonna look at the inside and the outside and all around all of the door. The next is an operational check. That's the physical operation and activation or mobilization of the door. And the last would be called a simulation or drop test. And the simulation or drop test is typically performed on some door that has some powered or automatic actuating device that closes that door. In this particular case, we don't have that. This is a self-closing door. So we're only going to do the visual inspection and the operational check of this door. One of the first things we should do on any fire door is look at both the inside, the outside, and all around it for any obstructions. An obstruction would be something that prohibits this door from either fully opening or fully closing. closing. Some obstructions uh, that you might see could be like a waste can or a chair, that either one of those could prop the door open. Beyond that, you should look at the door for any physical damage. On this wooden door, I'm gonna look at both the face of the door on this side, the face of the door on this side, as well as the frame and any jam elements. Some doors have gaskets. If this door has a gasket, you should make sure you look at all of the sides of the jam. In this case, I'm looking at all of the sides of the jam and make sure the gasket is intact and in fact undamaged. In this case, this gasket is perfectly fine. Within your visual inspection, you can also look for any missing or damaged hardware. This would include things like, like levers, hinges, closures, etc. I'm also looking at our strike. You wanna make sure that if I have hinges and there's four screws, holes, there should be four screws. A missing screw can transfer heat and fire and smoke. And so in this case, I don't have any missing damaged hardware. 
Then when you're looking at a, do uh, at a fire door, you should also look at its surface. You can't have any signage on any fire door that exceeds 5% of its total area. Well, what is 5%? 5% is roughly the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So if I have anything on this door greater than eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, that would constitute too much surface area blocked. Now, when you're looking at that, it could only be attached by tape or adhesive. I can never mount anything to a fire door using any type of mechanical fastener, like a screw. And so you wanna make sure that on these fire doors, I don't have anything that's, that's gone through the surface of the door. Another important element to the fire door is looking at it when it's closed and all gaps are full. Now, from the inside of this door, I have an opportunity to look at the gap that has occurred between the closed door and the jam. This door is no longer plumb and has warped a little bit. And so there is actually as much as a half inch of gap at the bottom of this door as it meets the jam. So that would be, that would be something on your visual inspection you're going to want to see. And then lastly, from this side of the door, we're going to want to look to make sure our threshold, bottom of the door, is non-combustible. When I look at the bottom of this door and I see the carpet extended from the hallway into this space migrating under that door, that is a combustible threshold and that would be an issue that we're going to look at. When we go to the other side of the door, we're going to look at the gapping. And before we look at the gapping, because this, this particular fire door is a locking fire door, I want to do the operational check. And the operational check is my movement of the door. In the operational check, I'm just going to open the door and close it. This door has to close in less than five seconds and it must fully engage and latch. I heard it latch. You want to inspect this door on an operational basis no less than two times. It's latched and closed twice. When we go to the other side of the door in our visual inspection, we need to look at its gapping. So let's go to the other side of this door and let's take a look at gapping. When we look at gapping, we're looking at the distance between the door and the frame, both the frame on the side and the top, and then lastly, the gap at the bottom where the threshold is. I use a gapping tool. This gapping tool is available at a lot of the online retailers you can think of, and I put this tool in between the door and the frame, and on a wooden door, I'm looking for less than one eighth of an inch. On a steel door, I'm looking for less than three sixteenths of an inch. So on this particular door here, I've got less than one eighth of an inch. So this gap is fine. Same I want to look at up here, but my challenge is I've got much greater than one eighth of an inch. I've got almost three eighths of an inch. So that gap is incorrect. And then I would look at the bottom of the door and make sure I've got less than three quarters of an inch. So when you're inspecting fire doors anywhere in the building, understand that you've got a visual inspection, an operational check, and, a, and possibly a simulation or drop test you can perform on each door. And when doing the visual inspection, to help you, we've created a checklist available at the CCPIA website that will, that will help you identify those key elements you need to inspect on every fire door. So with that, make sure you do follow the COMSOP, Section 17, when you're inspecting any fire door in any commercial building.